Mary Conley. So, Fab, I tell you, my day is never boring, is it? No. So, guys, we were getting ready to film for you guys up in the gym, but uh, suddenly got an alarm call from my alarm company at the office. Supposedly, there's glass breakage. I am assuming police are in route, route, however you want to call that, route. And so we have jumped in the car to meet them there because no one's at my office that I know of. So, yeah, another exciting day, Pat. <laughs> uh, I forgot my gun. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said don't get out of the car ah. if we beat the police there. And this guy's driving like 10 miles an hour, really. Oh, well, I guess he's driving the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Yes. We caught him. <laughs> <laughs> We're so good. <laughs> Call the Keystone Cops. <laughs> so we get down here and please are here. My husband and his business associate uh, were here. Supposedly the CPA guy left and set the alarm, wasn't supposed to, because the dogs were left inside. And when the dogs moved around, it set off the alarm. Now why it came out as glass breakage instead of just motion detection, I don't know. So now I gotta call the alarm company back and say, what the hell, hmm. mess up on your part. But guess what? We had an order come in and we were able to fulfill it. So, you know, it wasn't a waste of <laughs> <laughs> And now we get to go get lunch. So it's all good. Hey, peeps! So, it quit raining for a minute, Fab. I know, finally. finally. God, I feel like we've been in this daily cycle of rain, 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 rain. Anyways, guys, um, y'all know I'm a concealed handgun license carrier, and uh, it's been brought to my attention that a friend of mine has opened up a gun range called the Saddle River Gun Range uh, here just north of us. And um, besides being open to the public, and having lanes for the general public to shoot on. They also have a private area. So this is supposed to be like the country club of gun ranges. Hey. So I think I'm gonna go sign up today as a Davy Crockett member, <laughs> which gives me exclusivity to the private section of this beautiful gun range. Not a lot of, I'm not sure if we're allowed to film, but we're gonna try to sneak it if we're not allowed. Um, but I'm gonna hopefully sign a contract there today to, be, to become a Crockett member and um, show you guys what a country club gun range looks like. So let's go. $300,000 or more, the first 10 now at one. shooting? Yes, I hear them already. You hear them shooting? <laughs> I was like, no, so scary. I'm scared. Can you imagine how many guns you'd have to have to have safe this big? I wonder how many purses you could put in there. Not very many. Oh, they're not that big? Well, but my closet is my safe. You're right. That's why it's locked. You're right. Oh my God, they got food here. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I just came for the food. <laughs> they have a whole cafeteria. Yes. And merch. They have merch. They have a cafeteria. <laughs> This way is the regular gun range for normal people. Uh -huh. Go back here to this door back here. See? That's for the private area. They've got an archery center. They've got this archery thing where you can shoot people with these rubber, these plastic bow and arrows. What? Yeah, it's fun. Wow, you can really spend the whole day here. Yeah. And bring your kid. What the? God, I love this outfit. So trendy. <laughs> this is a sack. <laughs> look, you can get the matching pants. Yeah, whole look. What's this tent over here? Hunting. Six seventy nine. Wow. Your new makeup off. <laughs> <laughs> My new studio. Here's your new shisha. 
put one in the back. This is where I'll stay. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna buy you your very own stun gun. I'll stun myself. Huh? I said I'll end up stunning myself. You want a pink one or a black one? <gasps> pink, of course. I'm gonna crystal it out too. Stun gun and flashlight. You have to show me how to use it. Oh, it's not hard. This is an even bigger one. My other one got broke, so you think I should get pink or black? What color did you get the other one? Pink. Get another pink one. Get another pink one? To match your gun. I have a, I have a pink gun and a black one. Oh. Eighteen over there. Six. Wow. Six over here and eighteen over there. Yeah. And then we have, I don't know, how long has it been since you did it? You excited? Yes. When's the last time you shot? Last fall. So I, I need to, you need to shoot more than once a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean like I'm I'm super excited to join and see it's like get back into it. It's not cheap. It's like six thousand dollars to join. Damn. Then there's a monthly fee. You sure you can't just shoot in your backyard? <laughs> yeah. On the golf course. <laughs> I think the homeowners association would probably turn me in. What size gun do I have to buy to get a case like this? I need a big ass gun. I was like, I was like, oh, is this for surfboards? <laughs> I think it's for a big old machine gun. It's huge. Yeah. Yes. You're looking at the newest member of the country club, <laughs> gun range. Yes. So we're not gonna shoot today. But we're gonna film again on Monday when we come back to shoot. So that'll be in the rest of this video. TCBY. <laughs> Never been here before. <laughs> but we made a complete stop, so it must be good. <laughs> Yummy. Mm. You've been on a little sweet kick lately. <laughs> hey, Pete. Guess what today is? <laughs> Sleepy Monday. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be called Motivational Monday, Fab. <laughs> Fab, like, it's cloudy and it's rainy. I just want to be in bed. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm the opposite, guys. Like, I can't wait. Like, when it's rainy out, I just can't wait to just get out and just, I don't know. I'm just weird. I think I'm weird, huh, Fab? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not even one of those people that can stay in bed and watch movies. Yeah, you can't sit still. Even through the pandemic, remember we we would run across people going, "Oh my God, I've, have you seen this movie?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> oh, oh my God, well we've watched so many movies, and I'm like, I didn't watch one. What's the last movie you've seen fully? Like on TV or at a movie theater? Any kind. Oh, actually, I want to know from movie theater. That's the one I really want to know because you have not, for the two years I've known you, you've never stepped foot into a movie theater. True true i would have to say the last time i was and i don't even know the date but i would have to say the last time i was at an, a movie theater was when my daughter still lived here with the twins and it was a movie that we took the twins to i know that had to be it because i can't remember the last time i was at a movie theater with my husband because we hardly would ever go to a movie theater so it had to be i and i, I just can't even recall what movie it would be but it had to be with my daughter and the twin grandsons so it had to be a movie, of course, that the grandkids wanted to watch. Wow, so weird. Yeah, right? I'm just not a movie person. <laughs> I mean, like, and, and even if I watch a movie here, thank God I've got the DVD thing, you know, to where I can, like, stop it mm. and go to the bathroom or go do whatever I want to do or maybe come back to an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just not a movie person. I don't sit still. I Weird, weird. And that's weird. okay. That's what we're going to discover here today. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't sit still? <laughs> yes. And some people call me a workaholic. I don't know where that workaholic came from either. Um, well, I, I take that back. I do too. And some people go, Teresa, you don't even enjoy life. You just work too much. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you where that workaholic came from. First of all, it was a work ethic that my parents gave me, that instilled in me. I mean, like when you're born and raised on a ranch, there is no downtime. You don't get to sit around and watch movies and 
do whatever you want to do. There's chores to be done. There's animals to be fed. There's things to be done. And I can remember sometimes, maybe it was on a Sunday night, we would get to sit down finally with a bowl of ice cream and watch like Walt Disney World or Hee Haw <laughs> or Hee something like that. I mean, like literally, that's all I can remember getting to watch when I was a kid because we were so busy on the ranch taking care of chores and animals and all that kind of stuff that there's just no time to sit around, you know? Um, and then as I grew older, I think my workaholic, if that's what you want to call it, came from the different deaths that I was having to endure. I felt like when my brother died, the more I worked, the less I had time to think about him and cry. When my, when my son died, you know, I think that's where that comes from is because when you're, when you're busy, I can, I can remember going back to work when my son died and they were like, why are you back here at work? And I was like, I don't know, where am I supposed to be? You know, but I knew that if I sat at home, all I was going to do is sit and cry. And at least at work, maybe I would have moments of crying, but I could try to focus on doing other things that wouldn't have me just sitting around feeling sad all the time. So I think, I think through my brother dying through my divorce and you know the custody battle and everything with the kids and and then my son dying and my dad dying and all these people dying I just felt like the more I worked the less I had time to focus on feeling sorry for myself and crying and does that make sense yeah it makes sense now I mean like so so even to this day like if I start to feel like I'm missing my son, I allow myself, of course, to look at those pictures and miss my son, but instead of staying in that spot and in that moment, I get out of it. I'm like, okay, I dealt with it, I've cried, but I don't need to spend the entire day doing this. I need to, I need to get busy, I need to make things happen. You know, so, um, so that's where my workaholic thing comes from. But also, my workaholic thing comes from there's so many things in life I want to do like ever since I was a little girl All I could think about was everything I wanted to do and achieve and I can remember so many times people telling me That I couldn't do it and I'd be like well, why can't I if if I if that person on the TV can do it Why can't I do it? You know, um, and so it, Regardless of whether it was my mother telling me I couldn't do it or somebody else telling me I couldn't do it I was like I think I can, like why can't I, you know? So you should never let people talk you out of what you want to do in life. Like Fab, when you wanted to become a makeup artist, did you let someone tell, tell you you couldn't do it or talk you out of it? No, but there were people. Of course, right? Mm -hmm. And what were they saying? It's not a real job, how are you gonna make money? It's not a lot of money to be made in makeup. Get a real job. Hmm, no. hmm. You don't want me behind someone's desk. <laughs> And look how many famous makeup artists are out there. Tons. Hmm. Right? Tons. So you should never let someone, and I don't care if it's somebody that makes $40,000 a year doing whatever they do, they should not be allowed to tell you you can't do something. Does that make sense? Like, like I wanted to become rich. I wanted to become a millionaire. I wanted to have big houses and big cars and big, I mean like I wanted all of that and I knew a $40,000 a year job was not going to get me there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if, if all you want and, and believe me, don't come at me haters. I mean like, don't come at me, but I mean like if all you want in life is to have a great job so that you can buy a great house and have, just have a great living, then that's fine. Go after that $40,000 a year job or $80,000 a year job that, Hey, we have to have those people in life. But if you're one of those people that feels like you're destined to be super wealthy or you know live in a 20,000 square foot house or drive a Rolls Royce or do any of that kind of stuff, then an average job just might, it's probably not gonna be the thing that you need to do to be able to get to that level, right? And it's always been like, have you ever been around people that that they just want to talk about back in high school days and and you might be too young fab for this but i mean like 
you know, you might, if you're around people that just want to talk about their old boyfriends or their high school days or Maybe this or that, or, and you want to talk about the present things like who's running for president or, or who's running for Congress or who, or, or you want to talk about the stock market or you want to talk about that kind of thing. But those people don't know how to talk about that subject or those kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. I get very frustrated when I'm around people like that because I'm like, okay, this is what I want to talk about, but they don't know how to talk about that. And somebody in my life, and I'm not going to say who it was because they're going to come after me, they would say to me, well, you need to lower yourself down to their level so that they can talk to you. And I'd be like, but I worked really hard to get to this level. Why do I have to keep coming down to their level? Why can't, you know, they had every opportunity to go to school and, and learn and get smarter to, you know, but I'm like, there's just, there's always going to be those kinds of people in this life. You know, I'm like, not everybody. I, I've always said, if you're the smartest person in the room, get the hell out. Right. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the, you need to actually be the dumbest person in the room because as if you're the dumbest person in the room, that means that you have so much more to learn from all of these extremely intelligent people in this room and you need to be like a sponge and learn, 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 learn. If you're the smartest person in the room, what's that going to do? Make your ego feel good? <laughs> hey, I'm the smartest. Woo, you know, big deal, right? But you should never let anybody talk you out of your dreams and your goals. Fab, what is it I'm working on this year? What are you working on this year? <laughs> There's plenty of things on the list. Okay, what was something that I said a year ago I was never probably going to get into? The beauty industry. You swore up and down. I swore up and down I was not going to be involved in the beauty community, didn't I? Yep, you fought it. I fought it. Fought it tooth and nail, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Fought it, fought it, fought it. And people would just keep sending me beauty products and this and this and that. Next thing I know, I'm sucked in. Right? Mm-hmm. What did I file for this last week? <laughs> a trademark. <laughs> I have plenty of trademarks, but we just we just filed the trademark for the cosmetic and skincare line. Ooh. Yeah. So along with all my other trademarks that we do things with, um, yeah. So we're really excited. Um, I don't think we're going to start off huge. We're going to start off small and see where it goes, but we're really excited about that. Um, got a couple other things in the works also. So um, even though 2020 has seemed like it's been like a really scary year so far, <laughs> everybody's been like, can we just put the pause button on and start over or just rewind, you know? It's like they were telling us the other day on the news that literally this past four months, we have literally lived almost an entire decade in the past four months. Everything that we've gone through in four months period of time is usually what happens in about a decade of time. So, good, I mean, and we're only halfway through the year, people, you know? But what I'm doing is I'm using it to my advantage. I mean, like I, you know, through this pandemic, you have not found me sitting around, you've not, set, you've not seen me laying around watching movies and eating and gaining 20 pounds. You, I mean, like I have just kept working, 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 working because I am using this pandemic to my advantage to plow through and get a bunch of work done because I'm hoping to finish 2020 off like freaking amazing. Even though the first half's been kind of bad in some way, we're going to finish it off like freaking amazing. We're going into 2021 with guns a blazing. Yes. <laughs> right? I mean, like, I cannot wait. So, like I said, don't let people stand in your way. Don't let people tell you you can't do what you go, you're going to do. Look at we're going to switch right now to a, a fashion designer. Um, this guy literally started designing at the age of five. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you were five years old and you had all of these ideas and somebody kept telling you you couldn't do it or it's a waste of your time or you're so stupid or why are you doing that or you know what I'm saying? Right. Like at five. And this guy has got this amazing, amazing, amazing brand called Gigovana. And I am in love, in love. Look at this duffel bag. I literally don't have anything pink. How did he know to send me something pink? <laughs> no, this video is not sponsored by G. Gavana. Oh, although it should be. <laughs> but look at this. I'm telling you what, you guys, this, this quality of this brand is to die for. But what I'm so impressed with is this guy 
at the age of five, had this brainstorm or this idea or this dream, and he never let anybody stand in his way of being able to make it happen. Look at these shoes. Like, look at these shoes, guys. Yes. Oh, he says this is probably the hottest selling brand, or the hottest seller he's got, these shoes right here. And then he sends me red ones. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the soles, green. Green for money. Yes. <laughs> Isn't this hot? And look at these black ones. I'm just like so in love. They're, it's so well made. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. Sent me all this stuff. Fanny pack, look at this fanny pack. Look at the design. Look at that, hot. So cool. You guys have to, have to, have to go check them out. We're gonna leave links, be links below in the, in the description box. This is a smaller one, this was a bigger one. So amazing. Workout clothes. Look at this. Cute, cute. Shorts outfit, workout clothes. I cannot wait to try all this stuff on. One PC onesie. He's got a book out, face mask, this luggage. Amazing. Sends me this letter. Dear Teresa, Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Alfred Rogers. I'm the owner of a new company in the market called G. Govana. I want to thank you for letting for getting to know the brand and we want to personally welcome you with a plethora of gifts to show our appreciation. The 21st century newest company will inspire the natural way of creating and making you feel confident and comfortable. We are always bringing new fashion designing skills to the marketplace and today it's a reality. I have started designing at the young age of five amidst, amidst challenges that would have stopped me but motivated me to keep going and now has metamorphed into a great clothing brand called Gigovana. Our brain, brand main goal is to improve and in, innovate and create our products to fit our clients needs which we will continue you which you will continue to to evolve with clients needs which you will see continue to evolve with time the fashion market will continue to shape and so will we Gigavana is a unique clothing brand which is naturally designed to give a person comfort and confidence there you go love that word confidence right this confidence is made from the aura of the Savannah and Sahara, ranging from jackets, porch bags, shoes, gowns, trousers, suits, track suits, blouses, luggage, and so on. As a luxury brand created, discover our own market value, remarket innovation, and creating practice that drives offers. We hope that you enjoy your new collection and will be the main focus of the fashion generation to come. Thank you for your time. Five years old, guys. Five years old. And look what he created, and look, look what he's got now. I mean, like, just amazing. And that's no different than me when I was when I was a teenager, and I was standing in Beverly Hills, and I was I was looking at uh, you know those houses in Beverly Hills and taking pictures and saying, I'm going to live in a house just like this someday. I mean, like, you know. And even though, look at this luggage, look how pretty. And even though people were telling me that I was crazy and don't think that way and how stupid and so on and so forth, you know. It's taken me years, but it, it, it happens, guys. Like, you can make it happen. Nobody says it's gonna happen overnight. Nobody, nobody usually makes anything happen overnight. It just takes consistency, and it takes dedication, and it takes focus. I've always told you guys, you gotta focus, you gotta be dedicated, and you gotta be consistent. And it doesn't matter whether it's a YouTube channel that you're creating, it doesn't matter whether it's a brand you're creating, it doesn't matter whether it's a book you're writing, it doesn't matter if it's, it's look, you just got certified as a new yes. airbrush makeup artist too, right? Yes. I mean like, you know, I'm like, the sky is the limit. There's, there's nothing to hold you guys back except yourself. You guys gotta get out of your own way and, and explore the world. And right now, even though some of you think right now is just not the right time, that the world's falling apart and you know, this pandemic and this coronavirus and the unemployment rate and all this kind of stuff, there's no time like the present to make things happen. If there's something on your mind, if there's something, just get out there, try it, do it, do it. The only person holding you back is you. Get out of your own way. So, 
It's the same thing as with um, owning a gun. I always wanted to own a gun. And you say, why? I don't know. I just always felt like, I always knew that I could take care of myself because I'm like, I've, I've always paid attention to karate and martial arts and I always lifted weights. I always stayed in shape. So I always felt like I could take care of myself, but I always wanted to take it a little farther. And when my closet became famous and I started becoming highly recognized all over the world, like literally I could be in Amsterdam at the airport and I'd get recognized or I'd be in the Caribbean working out in the gym at the hotel and I'd get recognized. So then I started going, wow. And then I went through some stuff where I had to get a restraining order in 2014 against someone. And I'm telling you what, I was like, I'm going to become a gun owner. I'm going to pack, I'm going to pack some heat. So I literally that year went and took my concealed handgun license test. And I think my old assistant was, it was, uh, which you're gonna see in this film, he's gonna shoot with me. But my old assistant Riley, who's a sheriff's deputy now, uh, he went with me and um, we both, I think we both got we both got our license in because he wasn't a cop yet. I can't remember how it unfolded, but anyways, I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna push myself, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna go shoot a gun. I was scared, scared, I was terrified, terrified. I was like, <laughs> terrified. I'm, I, to this day, I'm still scared to death of guns, but, but literally I found that the more I was around a gun and worked with a gun and shot the gun and learned about the gun, the less scared I became of it. I think you're only scared when you don't know how to handle something. Like the first time we used this camera, right? We were scared to death. It was like, oh, what, what's this do? What's this do? Oh God, I'll probably mess it up if I touch this button. But the more you practice, the more you're around it, the more comfortable you get with it. It's the same thing happens with a gun. And so... You're gonna see when we get into this film um, that I literally, like I said, four or five, six years ago, went and got a concealed handgun license. I've, I've been a carrier now for since 2014. Um, but I, I finally went and joined my country club gun range and we go shooting. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So we have practice bullets and we have real bullets. So we have nine millimeter. Get that, get that back. Mm -hmm. Three eighty. You want to know why we have practice bullets and real bullets? Yeah, I thought there was only one kind of bullet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the kind that hurts you. <laughs> the potential to, to do damage, to hurt or kill it. something. The difference is the the real bullet. Real bullet being hollow points. This is the real bullet. Has the potential to do more damage when they enter the subject. Because these are rounded, called ball, ball ammo. And those are like hollow points. So when they go in, they spread and do a lot of damage. So today we only want to practice with the practice bullets, not the real bullets. And these are cheaper. Huh. <laughs> Crazy. And we have. Uh, Together again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a Montgomery County Sheriff's deputy who used to be my assistant before you, Fab. So crazy. Yeah. Hey, you want to hold the camera? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference, Fab. There's real bullets and then there's practice bullets. Wow. But they fire the same way from the gun. Yeah. There is difference in the amount of powder in the bullets. For some of them, it's a little bit more, a little bit less, as far as the bank. I didn't know. I didn't even know there was powder in bullets. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was just all gunpowder. Yeah. Remember how we washed our hands the other day? Yeah. To get all the, and you said, why do we have to wash our hands? Even though we didn't shoot, I said it's because you get all the powder, the gunpowder. So then there's another one of those yeah. things right there. So if we were to shoot today and get in we the car right. and go to the airport. Oh wow. And go to their new yeah. yeah. Procedures. We could get flagged if their assistant picked up certain close up chemicals on our skin. See? Flagged. That's why you want to. And, and sometimes washing your hands normally doesn't get off the gunpowder like yeah. that special. Stuff right. Does. Yeah, you really have to it's like a car wash for the hands. The more you know. The more you know. Right here. Okay. It's fashion. Ready? Fashion Friday. <laughs> <laughs>
Having children, and he's definitely on the ground. Hospital first, then prison. <laughs> you're coming at me, and you're in the back. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're about to gun you. I mean, yeah. 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 You, you do whatever, yeah. And with those okay. nails, uh, he won't have any <laughs> eyes left. That's funny. So how do you feel? I feel prepared. I'm good. Just a little refresher, you know? Do this weekly or every two weeks? Yes. Yeah. Guys, you always need to step outside your comfort zone. Right, Fab? Yes. Today was stepping outside my comfort zone again and getting that gun or those guns back in my hands. It's been a little while, but you know what? It's, it's kind of like we, we were just talking about Fab. You know, if, if, you haven't, if you haven't had a makeup brush in your hand for six months and you haven't done somebody's makeup for six months, the first time you go to put a makeup brush in your hand and do somebody's makeup, it kind of feels weird, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to have a concealed handgun license, um, to, you know, so that you can carry, you, you need to feel confident and comfortable at all times that you know how to handle that gun. And, you know, in today's day, you know, such craziness going on in this world, always got to be prepared. So step outside that comfort zone, gun, <laughs> <laughs> that's that comfort zone and uh, learn stuff that you don't know how to do. I mean, like, yeah. Jeff on Fab? Yes, this is pretty exciting. Fab's like, this is not the gallery. <laughs> there are no men here. There are plenty of men there. <laughs> <laughs> Just not your type. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We had fun. Uh, we put a lot of stuff in this video today, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, Motivational Monday, I'm here to motivate your asses. I am here to motivate you Get out there and live your best life. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And until next time, bye-bye.